Kristen Stewart is not the most popular actress in Hollywood. There are a lot of jokes, media, speculation, and opinions surrounding this woman trapped in Twilight's shadow. But I'm not convinced any of that gossip is representative of her acting ability. I'm not saying Kristen Stewart is the best actress, and I wouldn't try to convince anyone otherwise. But people tend to form quick, unwavering opinions about whether or not they like an actor. Though it's difficult to tear down those iron-caged opinions, I'd like to rattle the cage just a little bit and give you reasons why you should reconsider Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart has been in over 30 feature films, her first when she was 11 years old. She's worked across from director David Fincher in Panic Room, director John Favreau in Sethura, and director Sean Penn in Into the Wild, all of which were before Twilight. Since Twilight, she's worked across from Juliette Binoche in Clouds of Silmaria, Julianne Moore in Still Alice, and under director Woody Allen in Cafe Society. Throughout her career, people have wonderful things to say about her. In an interview with John Favreau, he told her, You really bring your lunch pail to work, so to speak. You've got a really strong blue-collar ethic about acting that I like to think I have, too. We auditioned a lot of people your age for Zathura, and I have to tell you, you really stood out as having a presence, and a look, and chops, and poise. Most young girls or boys have a sort of unfocused, scattered energy. You have a very still energy about you. More recently, director Richard Glatzer said, Kristen is a force of nature. Alex said working with her is like working with Brando. (laughs) She's molten, impassioned, resolutely truthful. She doubts herself constantly and is the last person to recognize how great she really is. Maybe that's the key to her genius. I think it's difficult for audiences to judge Kristen Stewart's full acting range because most people haven't seen much of her work. For example, in Speak, Stewart plays a freshman in high school who is raped by a senior. Stewart's performance in the film is carefully controlled. There's a scene where she creates an art piece for class. Her teacher is impressed and says, I see a girl caught in the remains of a holiday gone bad. Her flesh picked off day after day. Um, The palm tree might be uh, like a broken dream. I don't know, definitely has meaning. A lot of pain. As he says pain, Stuart looks up at him longingly as though she thinks he understands and she might be able to talk to him. But she doesn't speak. That's a lot for a 13-year-old Stuart to convey without words. I think one of the problems with seeing Stuart's ability is that a lot of her roles are similar to speak in that they only require brief, deeply emotional scenes. Audiences and critics tend to respond best to intensity, but as Christian Bale said in his 2011 Golden Globe speech, You can only give a loud performance like the one I gave when you have a quiet anchor. Um, and a a stoic character. I've played that one many times, and it never gets any notice. When people accuse Stewart of being emotionless, I would call that understated. Unfortunately, understated is easy to dismiss, which is a precarious place in the realm of public opinion. The public thinks it knows best, and the persona surrounding an actor can affect the roles they take. But should it? Consider what the world would be like if Hollywood indulged every prejudice the audience had. It's this exact type of prejudice that reduces Kristen Stewart to this image. It's Woody, I admit. Not just the idea, but the number of emotions they chose and the variety. The wistful emotion is perfect. Wistful is an absurdly specific emotion that is difficult to convey in a still picture. But here's my response. Some emotions are a bit tricky to match, but I think most of these scenes match perfectly. In the aroused scene, Stuart lowers her eyes and presses the tip of her knife against her lower lip. In the mischievous sequence, you can see the glare she's giving Jesse Eisenberg, taunting him. In the terrified scene, she is suitably panic-stricken. It's more difficult to put in the time and effort it takes to find this kind of range in an actor. It's a lot easier to stick to our prejudices. Think about Will Smith in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. 
Would we allow him to leave that goofy comedic role and throw that first punch in Ali? Believe him capable of Tom Hanks-like feats and carry the whole movie on his own in I Am Legend? Or make us feel a lump in our throats in the pursuit of happiness? Consider when Stuart was just coming off the final Twilight movie. The first film she was in was an indie not many people saw called Camp X-Ray, where she plays a soldier in Guantanamo Bay who befriends a prisoner played by Payman Mahdi. It's a complex role that forces us not only to identify with Stuart's character, but reflect on ourselves as well. One of the soldiers in the film states that he doesn't feel guilty about anything they do there because the prisoners are the guys who did 9-11. From this position, we must watch Stuart's performance as two people try to connect with each other when constantly separated by bars. We have to feel that emotion through those tiny windows and follow both Stuart and Maudie from this To this... You're making fun of me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're making fun... You're laughing at me, huh? Come on, look at you. You're laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> and beyond. Landy, you... You are a good guy. <sighs> yeah, thanks. Am I a bad guy or a good guy to you? Ali, it doesn't matter right now. It's the only time it matters. The film's climax hinges entirely on this empathy working, and for Stuart and Maudie to build it together. It's hard to empathize with celebrities because we hold fame and wealth to a different standard. In 2012, thanks to the ending of the Twilight franchise and Snow White and the Huntsman, Kristen Stewart was the highest paid actress that year. That's a difficult fact to ignore when people are watching Stuart fidget and verbally fumble through interviews. And that's the introverted nature people target in Stuart. Though I can't remember who, I once saw a morning show host ask, if you're an actress being interviewed, can't you just act like a normal person in front of the camera? A lot of people share this sentiment. We want our actors to be monkeys that dance for us. We forget that they're human. People in Hollywood are human, and it takes a strong person to choose a life in the spotlight when they are so introverted. Regardless of how much money they make or how successful they are, we can choose to see past their wealth and consider what their environment is like, or what they must overcome. There's a quote from Dave Chappelle being interviewed on Inside the Actor Studio that exemplifies what I mean. In it, Chappelle talks about filming Blue Street with Martin Lawrence, about Martin's stroke during filming, and Martin's arrest when he was screaming at people in the street with a pistol in his back pocket. It's how tough he is. What is happening in Hollywood that a guy that tough will be on the street waving a gun, screaming, they are trying to kill me. It, a weak person cannot get to sit here and talk to you. So what is happening in Hollywood? Nobody knows. The worst thing to call somebody is crazy, is dismissive. I don't understand this person, so they're crazy. That's bullshit. These people are not crazy, they're strong people. Maybe the environment is a little sick. While the internet made jokes about her and the media focused on the Robert Pattinson gossip, Stewart kept working. She's a self-proclaimed workaholic, and it doesn't matter what we say about her. She's just going to keep going. On the way, she's been nominated for a few films. Most of her wins center largely around Clouds of Selmaria, but it's worth mentioning she won awards from the Alliance of Women Film Journalists, a Boston Society of Film Critics Award, a Florida Film Critics Circle Award, a National Society of Film Critics Award, a New York Film Critics Circle Award, and a César, which is like the French Oscars, making her the first American actress to ever win one. So we can leave Kristen Stewart trapped in gossip and Twilight's shadow, but doing so may limit our perceptions of other actors' abilities. Maybe a TV actor who wants to do film, even though it's rare for a TV actor to move to film, even rarer to do so successfully. Perhaps part of the reason for that is our rigid, unwavering opinions about actors, opinions that limit us. When asked about how he chooses his roles, Tom Hanks said, Because our job is to hold the mirror up to nature. If it's funny, that's fine. If it entertains you, that's fine. It's, but it must, under all circumstances, hold the mirror up to nature. We must be constantly examining who we are, how we got here, and how we're getting through all of this. He wasn't just talking about choices for himself. He was talking about the choices we should all make. He's saying the next time you see Kristen Stewart, don't look away. Look straight at her. She is not, nor is any actor, a foregone conclusion. 
Each film, each role she's in, is an opportunity to reflect on ourselves. All we need is the courage to do so. Well, that's all for this video. What are your favorite roles of Kristen Stewart? What are your least favorite? Do you think she's underrated? Please let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. If this is your first time on the channel and you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe. There's a new video every month. And if you really liked it, hit that like button. Because maybe you feel sorry for the guy who just spent 10 minutes defending Kristen Stewart. I'll take your pity likes. Next month, I look at good dialogue in films. And if you haven't seen our Brotacular or Soundtracks episodes, please take a look. Because we're desperate. See you guys in the next one.